So good afternoon. Are you ready? Uh, only 18 people are there because uh, others are busy with the assignment, I think. Shall we start? Can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Uh, yes, sir. Can yeah. And uh, shall we start then? Uh, because I don't know. Because 19 only yes. available. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, the, um, the others will come or uh, shall we start? Uh, wait for a while because uh, some of them are still joining. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anybody uh, is recording this, sir? So then you can share with them. Yeah, somebody, I don't know. <laughs> somebody recording or not. <laughs> uh, not recording. Anybody that uh, who is recording, please uh, let me know. Okay, okay, sir. Wait, I will just. Okay. So then I'll start, right? Okay. Uh, okay. First of all, uh, uh, I want to uh, emphasize uh, certain things about uh, the assignment two, not assignment one. Uh, we to, these days we are doing uh, the theoretical uh, sessions for uh, benefit for the uh, assignment one that is online quiz. But anyway, before I start it, uh, I thought to better to uh, discuss some few facts about uh, assignment two, which is uh, regarding the uh, uh, designing a new theoretical uh, routing protocol. Uh, in your screen, uh, in my screen, which I have shared, you can see the marking criteria, uh, which is uh, more similar to the, the structure that has been given by the university. But uh, what I want to emphasize is, uh, uh, if you look at uh, the the criteria which I have shared, uh, actually uh, uh, anybody can't uh, say that uh, everybody should uh, uh, success in this uh, new uh, route routing protocol design. The the main purpose of this is to allow the students to uh, try this out, right? Make me Usaha Krimata, Godam Vedagatang, Odama Project Tekak Karanikatama Vatini, take a success in on the failure in on the Kinik and Nimi Vedaga. At the water, a student take at a Dalatin effort taker, Egata Kochra, Mahanswella, the another. Make the me a me background decay, Kochra, knowledge, Garanti, another. Mimatame, Godam Vatini, even to make a success failure again a fact taken in me. Any Sami, I mean. Mulika uh, Deva, for example, the introduction, the introduction to the report. Uh, make a animating via Lila Tina and Ekata Yamkisi Lakuno Pamana Kambeno. You will get some marks. And routing protocols, you have learned. Routing protocols, Gan Yamaki Ganagata. So you can give a small introduction to the routing protocol. So it will also contribute some marks to your total marks. And uh, you can uh, uh, explain that why we use these routing protocols. That also contributes some marks, and uh, and their importance you can discuss. That also contributes some marks, and different types of routing protocol you can discuss. So that also give you some marks to your total marking. So what I want to say is that at least when you come to this day, I mean 25th. Uh, you have to uh, complete this area. That means up to different types of routing protocol. Because uh, if you have done up to this level, at least you can uh, make uh, 20, uh, 20 or 25 marks uh, out of 100, right? So then only you will have to make a small effort that uh, to to come up with a, 
thinking of uh, a way of uh, creating a new routing protocol so there your effort is the the muchly evaluated than the success or failure factor so therefore uh, sometimes your your argument might be not success Uh, sometimes uh, it might be not practically implemented so that, that is something else right but your your effort to uh, create something is the the most important thing so therefore then api gana kaduhama gana hadanda utsaha karala thiyena eka thata thamai goda lakuna hambenne uttareta wada enisa gane samata uttare wardinna puluwa eda e gana hadanda utsaha karala thiyena api peer wala lakuna denawa hari mataka athi उदाहरण and how you are routing protocol calculates cost so so it might be some problem the the way that you are going to calculate but you are trying some some way of uh, doing it right and present a formula if you, if there is a formula present so you can tell that to us and you can explain it in a appropriate way and also if you if you going to do some changes to the packet headers so then you can discuss that also if you do that right sometimes according to your approach uh, it might be different right for, for example uh, we can uh, uh, we, you suppose that if, if you do like that you can think about it right and uh, so there are if you uh, doing some changes to the packet headers uh, that means you can present it in a table and explaining what are the each the fields of uh, what what they do and what are their responsibility and uh, what are the, the field sizes that you are going to use and uh, if you may have multiple headers so then you can discuss that too so uh, and uh, you can uh, uh, ex- example for example you can say that one for enable establishment one for the transferring the root information one for updating root information so likewise the uh, different packets uh, headers you can uh, discuss and how within then this protocol when comes to the operational level meka den kriyatmaka tattira patwanala pase kohomada meya hasirenne behave wenne how this protocol operates does it begin by sending hello packets shall ameya hello packets yawana da ema natta acknowledge karanna koi vidihata da ूट that means um, how much jet data can be transferred by utilizing this new protocol and how you have addressed to the security side so whether you have done any improvements to the the security uh, uh, hassles that that are prevailing with the prevailing routing protocols and then that the protocols or the security problems or the address kara deva monad it was say oya ge me theoretical routing protocols ekey thiyena vaasi monada avaasi monada eh ema natta oyata karaganna bari vetta dewal monada thawa gena kote eos se karanna puluwan dewal monada what you can do and what you could do and what you couldn't do and what others can continue from your uh, your stop and start something so that's you can discuss and also Uh, any product if you take uh, any creation you take it has advantages as well as disadvantages so you can uh, frankly uh, openly you can discuss what are the weaknesses uh, what are the things that you have miss or what to, what are the things that you couldn't address so that's also give some marks to you by openly you are discussing it honestly you are discussing it 
and uh, you can give a conclusion that whether you are satisfied with this creation or whether you could uh, improve this creation or whether you have a plan to improve this creation in the future so likewise uh, you can tell something and and if you not know don't forget to put i triple standard reference type list it also contributes some marks to your total marks so see some things uh, it give you marks without much effort some things it will give some marks with some effort right without effort also you can get marks with effort also you can get marks so therefore just keeping a empty document is not give you any marks so what you have to do is you have to add something to it and give it to us so then only uh, you will be able to expect a, a, a considerable amount of marks will be added to your total marks and you will get a, a, a reasonable results from this right any same okati adahire wenne pa loku pressure ekak denawa mata alu protocol ekak hadanna baya kiyana tane indagena meka postpone kara kara postpone kara kara ada wenna kama hitiya na eka wenas karanna puluwang welawa den thama e kiyana wata aapo hitanda avasthawak thiyena කොහොමද මම මේකෙන් ඉස්සරහට යන්නේ මම කොතනද නැව තියලා තියෙන්නේ මම හිතපු හිතාගෙන හිටිය විදිය සම් යම් කිසි ප්‍රශ්නයක් නිසා ඉස්සරහට යන්න බැරි වෙන්න පුළුවන් ඒකට දැන් මේ මම කියපු දේවලුත් එක්ක වට වෙනස් විදිහකට මේක දිහා මේක ගැන හිතන්න පුළුවන් ඒ ඒකයි මට කරන්න ඕන උනේ මේ ලෙක්චර් එකේ මුලින්ම මොකද යම් කිසි කෙනෙක් ලොකු පීඩනයකින් මේකේ ඉස්සරහට යන්න බෑ කියලා කම්මැලි වෙලා මොන හරි තැනක හිර වෙලා ඉන්නවා නා එතනින් ගැලවිලා ඉස්සරහට යන්න පුළුවන් විදිහ තින්කින් පැටර්න් එකක් දැන් ඉඳලා හදා ගන්න පුළුවන් නම් මේ මේ මම කතා කරපු දේවලුත් එක්ක ඒක තමයි මට ඇත්තටම අවශ්‍ය වුණේ මේ 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 දේවක මේ මාකින් ක්‍රයිටීරියා එක පෙන්නලා ඔයාට මේ මේකේ යම් කිසි එලවන්ස් එකක් වට තියෙනවා මාක් එකකට යන්න කියන ඔපෝෂුනිටි එක පෙන්වන්න. ඉතින් ඒ නිසා මේක පෙන්වලා ඔකට බය කරන්නේ මේ මේකේ කිසිම වෙලාවක දෙක තුනක් තිබුණා නම් මම මාක්ස් දෙන එන ඔයාලට අමාරු ඉස්සරහට යන්න. නමුත් මේකේ ලොකු ස්කෝප් එකක් තියෙනවා කියලා කියන්නේ යම් කිසි ප්‍රමාණයකට මාක්ස් ටිකක් ගන්න තරම් ඔපෝෂුනිටි එකක් මේක තුලේ තියෙනවා කියන එකයි මේකේ අදහස. ඒ කියන්නේ ගොඩාක් දේවල් බලනවා කියලා කියන්නේ මාක්ස් කොයි විදිකින් හරි වෙනවා. පොක්ටි පොඩ්ඩක් දේවල් බලනවා නම් ඒකක්වත් නැති වුණොත් මාක්ස් එකක්වත් ගන්න බෑ. So so this is how uh, the evaluation will be placed on. Uh, so they are for uh, thinking think about it again. Uh, don't uh, miss it and uh, don't give up anything. Uh, you can do that. So uh, anybody can uh, do some small changes to anything. අපි උදාහරණයක් ඇතිට මේ රෝදී හැමදාම හතරස් විදියට තියාගත්තා නම් මම හිතන්නේ මේක වගේ කිසිම දිනුවක් අපිට ලබා ගන්න පුළුවන් වෙයි කියලා පොඩ්ඩක් හරි මේකේ කොන් හතර රවුම් කරලා ගන්න කවුරු හරි ඉතුවේ නැත්තා ඉතින් ඒ නිසා මේ එහෙම හිතන්න පොඩ්ඩක් you have to think about it uh, how i can do a change to this uh, don't uh, expect that somebody will do something for you no we have to do something right so in that way you have to uh, go forward and uh, try to uh, come up with a uh, with a different thing so then uh, it will give you some happiness also that uh, so i have done something uh, uh, by learning something uh, so that is what uh, actually uh, the uh, university also expect from a, a degree holder so because you are not a a level student you are not a level student uh, you are young and you have a uh, fresh brains uh, you can think uh, uh, in a new way any ideas you have uh, so all these things uh, all this power uh, you have to put uh, towards uh, this assignment and get get out of it uh, without going uh, somewhere and uh, lost somewhere don't do that, do like that you can do this that's what i want to tell uh, you can do this and you have uh, enough strength to do this 
uh, so therefore uh, so get that uh, uh, get that chance that opportunity and make you sit and uh, uh, bring the uh, the assignment in a, in a very uh, innovative and uh, comprehensive way and submit uh, on the deadline right so another uh, hours few hours you have uh, to make your make the mind to change and uh, bring something uh, different all right uh, any question please uh, before i jump into the presentations Do you have any questions? So it seems to be no questions. Right, uh, I'll uh, go to the presentations. Uh, let me see uh, what we do first. Uh, yes, so I'll uh, share the the open shortest uh, path first. Uh, I think uh, we have um, uh, done something somewhere here. Uh, actually, uh, so how, what is the shortest path uh, spanning tree uh, do? Uh, it is a link state routing protocol. Uh, so far, we have discussed, and it also uh, use uh, the path selection uh, method. So therefore, is uh, uh, it is uh, using uh, shortest path uh, calculation for each destination at each router. So each router will have a unique routing table, and uh, he's using uh, uh, algorithm called uh, distrust algorithm. So when you look into their routing tables, uh, the best route is passed to the routing table. And uh, uh, you can trace through the uh, distrust for a given router. Uh, and uh, so you can see that uh, so uh, A to uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, uh, G, H, I, J uh, is given. Uh, uh, if you can, uh, uh, if you can remember the graph theory, uh, you can apply that also. Uh, uh, so, so, so then you can see that how it should be uh, the shortest path from A to J. Uh, you can see that uh, from A to C is the path, their path, and then uh, it's 10, 6 plus 4 is 10. From there onwards, it's uh, D to H, it is uh, 4, that is 14. And from uh, there onwards, it is uh, uh, 20. So that is one of the part, and uh, you can see from A to B to uh, C that is 18. Uh, so then 22. So it is very very long part, uh, and also you can see that uh, uh, the other parts also the same, right? So likewise, uh, a, a shortest path can be uh, determined by uh, using the uh, distra uh, algorithm. Uh, you can see uh, in a OSPF uh, routing protocol uh, the areas, uh, some areas uh, single area and multiple areas of uh, OSPF. The areas allow uh, more efficient routing and scaling. So normally the area zero is the, the backbone uh, mm, uh, denoted. Uh, each uh, other area borders uh, borders with the backbone. Uh, that is, it is not uh, uncommon for small networks to use just uh, uh, area zero. The area border routers are used to connect areas to the backbone. Now you can see that uh, uh, in this uh, particular example, uh, in this picture, uh, there are uh, two networks. Uh, together which is uh, connected uh, with the backbone so the backbone is the area uh, yeah, zero is uh, denoted but when you take the other two areas that is area 10 and area 50 
so they have border routers so these border routers will be uh, contribute to into the connection of these uh, two areas of the um, OSPF uh, implementation so uh, each area limits the, the multicasting of routing information and that means uh, recalculating the routes are conducted in the isolated areas so when a link changes uh, the addition or modification or deletion because of addition modification or deletion the link can be changes so so in, a, in depending on that the recalculating the routes are conducted in the isolated areas so once the routes are okay, recalculated in an area, the information is passed to the other areas so that their routing tables can be updated. So the other areas do not need to run the uh, sorters pass first algorithm because uh, the information already has been uh, what you call uh, shared uh, with the others. So advantages of uh, multi areas for PF. Uh, smaller routing tables are there because of this. Uh, the router tables are not congested uh, and uh, they only have to keep the information uh, which is related to that particular area. The routes, uh, routes can be summarized. Uh, that means, example, the area 50 has networks like this and summarized uh, route would be, uh, we can uh, uh, mention as 80, 686.87.0 because other uh, other areas also uh, under this particular and it uh, can uh, you can see that uh, according to the the IPs and uh, reduce the link state uh, overhead that is a smaller area minimizes uh, processing and memory requirements and reduce uh, frequency of OSPF calculations also that means uh, whenever a change takes place, uh, the others uh, share the information with the other areas. So therefore, uh, calculation frequency of uh, OSPF uh, uh, will be uh, reduced. That is, uh, calculation only need to be conducted in the in the area that the route change has been taken place. So the OSPF packets, if you look at uh, the, it as the one type one, the hello packet uh, used to establish and maintain an adjacency. And uh, BDD, uh, that is, uh, it contains the abbreviated list of uh, routes of uh, uh, the LSDB, uh, link state uh, database. Uh, the receiving router checks the list and recall the, uh, they must match between the routers. Uh, link state uh, routing and type 3, that is, uh, uh, if there is any entry in the uh, DBD that is uh, uh, not recognized router will send the link state uh, uh, routing to learn about that route and uh, link state update uh, used to reply an LSR uh, and uh, link state acknowledgement is just acknowledged for the uh, uh, LSU link state update. So these are the different types. Uh, the LSU contains one or more L LSAs, link state advertisements, uh, type 1, the router, type 2, network, type 3, 4, summaries. Type 5 anonymous system external, type 6 multicast or SPFLA, and type 7 define not so stubby areas, and type 8 is external attributes, link state advertisement for BGB. So, likewise, there are different types. So, multi access networks like uh, the multi access network create uh, two challenges for SPF that is, creation of multiple adjacencies and extensive flooding of uh, link state advertisement. So the question is, uh, so how many adjacencies with 10 routers connected to a multi-access Ethernet network? So, so this is how it is calculated. So one, one, type, one type of question might come like this, and so better to demarcate it uh, and uh, uh, re, uh, re, I mean, uh, uh, revise, revise it again when uh, online quiz comes. Uh, these slides. 
the flooding. If uh, we had a network of 10 routers, uh, each router would send a, a link stage advertisement that is 10 link advertisements. So this L LS LSA would be multicast to the other nine routers. So one LSA become nine SLAs. So we have uh, 10 LSAs, thus we have flooded the network with 90 uh, LSAs. So if that uh, wasn't bad enough, if we need to acknowledge all those SLAs. So that is quite a lot of traffic uh, propagating the network just to establish routes. So we haven't even start sending data yet. So plus uh, all those hellos for the adjacency. So the solution is uh, actually a designated router and also the backup uh, designated router. So the OSPF uh, select a router to become a designated router. So now all uh, link state advertisement will only go to the uh, designated router. So then uh, we can uh, minimize the number of SLAs uh, which has multiple to 90 S S uh, LSAs, right? And the uh, designated router will send the uh, LSA link state advertisements to the routers. So this prevent everybody sending uh, link state advertisement at the same time and flooding the network with uh, link state advertisement. So this is the solution that they use. So uh, DRO, DR other, that is means uh, designated router other is a router that is uh, uh, neither a designated router nor a backup designated router is there. Uh, the DR other uh, who came up with this uh, because if this uh, both uh, the designated then backup uh, are not in the uh, active uh, state, so then there should be an alternative for that. So the backup uh, designated router is promoted to designated router in the event of failure of the DR. So the election of uh, designated router and uh, backup designated router. So election take place during the two-way state, the state we skipped uh, before. Uh, so essentially the router with the highest router ID becomes the uh, designated router. So that is how uh, the OSPF is uh, behaving. Uh, so some of the slides I have highlighted uh, where the question might come, right? So then uh, we will jump to the uh, next slide. Uh, so that is, uh, we will see, uh, it is about uh, the, the wireless uh, technology. So from here also some uh, uh, some uh, actually uh, uh, what do you say? Some uh, questions might come. Uh, so uh, so we better to uh, focus to those uh, areas also uh, in this uh, uh, session. Uh, so you can see that uh, actually, uh, let me uh, let me enlarge it. Uh, uh, let me see. problem with uh, moving the slides. So this uh, aim of this lecture is uh, uh, that uh, present an overview of uh, wireless uh, or the uh, WLAN configuration and requirements. Uh, so this is the background that is uh, the wireless lands have uh, come to occupy a significant uh, niche in the local area network market uh, because uh, due to the uh, natural uh, barriers, uh, sometimes the wired networks are not possible. So in such an environment, the, the solution would be the, the wireless uh, local area networks. 
so they so therefore they occupy a, a significant niche in the local area network market so organizations are finding uh, uh, wireless uh, local area networks and in this indispensable uh, addition to the wired uh, lands uh, so it will uh, give some advantages with respect to the wi wired that is uh, it is possible to have the mobility uh, relocation of the network very easily and uh, ad hoc networking and coverage where it is difficult to run wiring so as i said earlier so these are the, the the majority of home networks now use uh, wireless network as an addition and you know that if you have wireless router so then uh, all the devices you have in inside the home uh, can be connected uh, without wired uh, so it is more convenient so whenever you want to go to the downs uh, the ground floor or when you go to the, the the first floor of your house uh, so very easily you can move uh, with the device uh, without any has hazard uh, because uh, it is wireless and uh, you have your laptop or your <coughs> palm top or the the tablet uh, very easily you can connect to your net home network and you can use it <coughs> and uh, uh, the the wireless routers as an uh, access wireless access point to connect to the uh, internet service provider infrastructure. So the most uh, prominent specification for wireless LANs was developed by the uh, the standard called uh, IEEE uh, 802.11 working group. Uh, so sometimes uh, some question might come in that related to that. So if you look at uh, the single cell wireless LAN configurations, normally there is a, a backbone that uh, supports the servers, workstation, bridges, and routers. Now you can see in this uh, uh, example, uh, if I enlarge the picture, uh, it will be it. Uh, uh, you can see that, uh, so the, how this uh, uh, wireless uh, network connection uh, it's a user mode and control mode, you can see. Uh, so it's a bridge or a router and the internet switch is there, the servers are there, and uh, the PCs are there. So the, this way also, uh, by having a, um, a, a CM, that means a user module or a control module, uh, you can have. Uh, connections. Uh, let's see uh, the slide what it says. Uh, that is uh, uh, normally uh, the in, uh, there is a control mode that is act as an interface to a uh, wireless uh, local area network that includes either bridge or router functionality to link the wireless LAN to the backbone. And some access mechanism is required by the uh, control mode uh, that is uh, such as uh, polling or token passing to regulate access by the end systems and often the end station connect directly to the control module uh, but the the user module may also be implemented to give wired uh, stations uh, uh, access to the wireless network so wireless links to connect to wired networks, so wireless link to connect a wired network to a wireless device. So that's also possible. So multi-cell uh, uh, wireless LAN configuration. So in this configuration, there are uh, multiple uh, control modules interconnected by a wired LAN. So each control module support a number of uh, wireless end systems in range. Normally, each uh, control module would operate on different frequencies to avoid uh, interferences. And the end station connects to the control module with the strongest uh, signal that is normally closest, providing authentication is uh, successful. So my wireless LAN configuration, that is uh, my uh, multiple cell wireless LAN. So my control module is a wireless router that connects to the internet service provider. So because my uh, kitchen is solid uh, brick and then uh, tiled, the wireless signal in the kitchen is very weak. So normally, uh, why this uh, slide say like this? Because uh, 
you know that uh, the major disadvantage of uh, wireless technology is that uh, when physical barriers are more if you have so then uh, the wireless uh, signal strength will be getting weaker and weaker so therefore when we practically apply a solution like wireless uh, so we have to look at uh, the the environment that we are going to use this particularly uh, for open area uh, it is not a problem for a for a computer lab or, or a, uh, for a auditorium uh, like environment so it is uh, working very well but if it is a, a, a partition environment uh, so then uh, it will give some problems uh, to the network administrator that uh, the most of the users will complain that uh, the the weakness about the uh, the connections in, in wireless and therefore uh, we have a, a user module in the kitchen that repeat the uh, wireless uh, signal to the uh, user module in the front room which it in turn connects to the uh, uh, control module so so my tv connection to the user module in the kitchen and any any other wireless device in train so actually my means the the, the person who has uh, created this uh, presentation that is uh, you know, the Colindo university lecture uh, uh, it is referring so I have a, a repeater. Uh, he has a repeater that connect directly to the router to uh, repeat in uh, his uh, shed at the bottom of the garden. So signals are sent via electric electricity power cables. So the repeater in the shed then uh, connects to another control module to give you give wireless access in the garden. So so likewise uh, you can boost or uh, amplify the the wireless uh, signal strength to different location according to the requirements like this uh, so likewise uh, you can uh, enhance the the signal strength uh, of uh, the wireless system that you have established in your uh, home uh, according to the, the the weaknesses that it shows so therefore uh, so sometimes you can measure that uh, by different using different stick equipments that how the wireless uh, signal strength is there and then after that you can decide whether you are going to uh, put any amplifiers uh, to strengthen the weak uh, signal areas in your uh, organization or the home so there are some ad hoc networks that means normally a wireless station will connect to a wireless access point or router or a switch which is referred to as a cell right so uh, normal nomadic access or station can move from one cell to another and uh, reconfigure uh, an ad hoc uh, network that it uh, may, uh, makes use of uh, no infrastructure uh, a wireless station connect to another wireless station to form a temporary network and each station performs routing so this is called ad hoc network so typical requirement of a LAN is uh, actually the high capacity ability to cover short distances, uh, full connectivity among stations, and broadcast capacity, and in addition to these requirements, the wireless LANs must support uh, additional requirements specific to wireless communications. So the other uh, requirements, if you look at uh, wireless local area networks, that is uh, the throughput. That means the MAC uh, protocol should make an efficient use as possible to the wireless medium uh, number of nodes that means the wireless lands we need to support uh, hundreds of nodes across multiple cells and uh, uh, connection to a backbone um, that is a local area network the most cases the wireless stations require uh, interconnection with the wild, wired uh, local area and, uh, stations so therefore the connection to a backbone also uh, another requirement and service area that is a typical coverage area for a wireless local area network has a, a diameter of uh, 100 meters to 300 meters unless uh, a physical barrier is not get in the way right and uh, the battery power consumption that means wireless devices when mobile have an uh, infinite uh, power source uh, that means uh, power, mac 
protocol that requires mob mobile nodes to constantly monitor the access points or engage in frequent uh, handshakes in the inappropriate. So otherwise, uh, they can't ensure the connection in between the devices. And uh, transmission robustness and security also uh, another vital requirement. That means uh, the wireless LANs are especially vulnerable to interference. That is sometimes because of wind, uh, because of uh, different uh, frequencies, uh, uh, adverse trophings. Uh, we must ensure that reliable and secure transmission because uh, they are very vulnerable to the hacking uh, and cracking of uh, 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 different uh, intruders and uh, co-located uh, network uh, operation. That means uh, the popularity of uh, wireless LANs means that open two or more uh, wireless LANs are operating in the same area. So we must ensure that the wireless LAN do not uh, interfere with the, each other. And uh, the license free operation, that is, the wireless users would uh, prefer not to have to pay for a wire for a license for a particular frequency brand band. So we have a limit limited free bands available. So that's also uh, another problem. And handoff for roaming, that is, wireless nodes should be free to move from one cell to another. So that is called roaming. And uh, Dynamic configuration, that is, the MAC addressing should permit dynamic and automated addition, deletion, relocation of nodes. Nodes means any device, right? Uh, phone uh, or a laptop or a uh, uh, palm top or a tablet PC. So anything uh, can be replaced with the node uh, without uh, disruption to the uh, those or other users. And very important to, to study the, the standards which we are using under the wireless technology. Uh, that is in 1990s, the IEEE uh, has uh, had uh, that 802 committee formed and a, a new networking, uh, new uh, working group and uh, IEEE 802.11 to develop uh, MAC protocol and uh, physical medium specification. Uh, since then, the demand for wireless has uh, explored third, uh, different frequencies and data rates. So today there is an array of standards. So you can see that AGINT, AC, and AD likewise. So they are they have different capabilities. So if you look at some of some of the common topologies, topologies that we come across when we discuss about wireless technology, uh, AP is uh, 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 stand for access point that uh, that is a, an entity that has a station functionality and it's provide access to a distributed system via wireless media and BSS is uh, stand for uh, basic service set uh, is a set of its station controlled by a single coordination function and uh, coordination function is a stand for that is a logical function that determines when a station can transmit so DS is a, a distributed system that is a system used to interconnect a set of uh, basic service sets and integrated uh, local area networks to create uh, ESSs, right? So ESS is an extended service set, uh, a set of one or more interconnected uh, basic service sets uh, appears as if a station is part of one ESS to the LLC, even if the separate DSS. The frame uh, is another terminology that is uh, synonyms for MAC protocol data unit. MAC protocol data unit. Uh, it is called MPDU. It's a MAC protocol data unit. The unit of data exchange between two peer MAC entities uh, uses uh, services at the physical layer. Uh, MAC, uh, uh, that is uh, MSDU, uh, is a MAC service data unit, uh, information that is delivered as a unit between the MAC users. Uh, then station is any device that is contained in IEEE 8.0.11 uh, conformant uh, MAC and physical layers. 
So Wi-Fi aliens, that is uh, 802.11 products are based on the same standard. So therefore, uh, it's a concern that the product from different vendors will successfully inter uh, operate. So it is not uh, uh, rely on the, the manufacturer. The wireless uh, Ethernet uh, compatibility aliens, that is WECA, was set up in 1990 to ensure this. So because of that, uh, any vendor, whenever they manufacture any device, so it, is, it should comply with this uh, standard. The subsequently, they renamed uh, to Wi-Fi, that is wireless uh, fidelity, fidelity, right? That is uh, in brief, we call Wi-Fi, wireless fidelity, uh, Wi-Fi aliens, right? Uh, uh, aliens, right? Created a test suit to certify the interoperability. So this is some of the uh, IEEE 802.11 architecture. Uh, the smallest building block of a wireless LAN is a, a BSS. Uh, was basic service set. Uh, a collection of stations and uh, executing the same MAC protocol. Uh, competing for access to the shared wireless medium and uh, commonly referred to as a cell in the literature. Uh, uh, you know, you can see uh, very easily the basic service set and extended service set, how it is uh, differentiated. So I will enlarge it uh, for your convenience. So now you can see that uh, how the extended service set or ESS is there and BSS is there. Like, and you can see the wireless access points and uh, how this uh, distributor system is uh, interconnected. Sorry. So then uh, the next slide is about uh, mobile ad hoc networks. When we have uh, basic uh, service sets with uh, no access point, it is referred to as an uh, independent uh, basic service set. Now this is a mobile uh, ad hoc network because the, the access wireless access point is uh, uh, absent and the stations uh, communicate with each other directly or indirectly with the use of intermediate uh, stations. So this is a simple configuration. The, the diagram illustrates a simple BSS example. And the station is one BSS belong to that uh, BSS. And uh, in reality, the two BSS could overlap. A station could uh, participate in two BSS. So associate with the, with the BSS is a, a dynamic basic uh, service set, right? and station may join no power down no go out of the range so extended uh, service set uh, consists of uh, two or more uh, basic service sets interconnected by a distributed system so such a, a setup we uh, recognize as a ESS extended service set uh, typically a wired backbone uh, that is LAN but can be any communication network appears a single logical local area network to the LLC. So it could also interconnect other IEEE 802 LANs uh, that, uh, for example, Ethernet using a, a portal. The portal may be a bridge or router that is part of the wired LAN. These are some of the uh, IEEE 802.11 services. So that is uh, IEEE 802.11 defines a number of services that need to be provided by the uh, wireless LANs. Uh, that is uh, IEEE 802.11 LAN access. Uh, that is uh, authentication, uh, the the authentications and privacy also, and delivery of. Uh, MSDU uh, between uh, stations, that is uh, association, DS, this association and distribution, uh, integration, MSDU delivery and the associations. So these are the some of the uh, 802.11 services. And in distribution of a message within a, a DS, a distributed system, uh, two services involved with the distribution of a message within a, uh, distribution system or uh, uh, distribution and integration. 
Uh, distribution is the primary service used by station to exchange MAC frames when the frames must traverse the distribution is to get from one uh, basic uh, service set to another basic service set. So you can see that uh, example, uh, there are STA2 to STA7. Uh, uh, so the frame is sent from STA2 to STA1, which is the uh, access point for the for this uh, uh, basic service set. And the access point known knows that uh, the STA7 is not associated with the it is uh, basic service set so forwards frame onto uh, DS. So the DS accept the frame and routes to the uh, access point STA5 that knows the STA7. So STA5 receives frame and forward to STA7. So, so that's how uh, the, the routing taking place uh, to one from one network to another. So <coughs> If, if two stations that are communicating belongs to the same basic service set, then the distribution service logically goes through the uh, single uh, access point of that uh, particular basic service set. Uh, now you can see this example uh, uh, for that. So the integration service that is uh, enables the transfer of data between a station on an IEEE 802.11 LAN and a station on an integrated 802.x LAN, <coughs> that means the wired LAN that is physically connected. <coughs> so they are they are using different logical topologies that is sometimes the Ethernet token, bus token, ring or fast Ethernet, etc. The integration service take care of any address translation or media conversion regimes. <coughs> so So if you look at uh, the, some of the uh, IEEE 802.11 services, uh, that is the number of services that need to be provided by the wireless LANs. Uh, one is authentication, uh, deauthentication, privacy. So these three services can be grouped into association services. That is uh, association, uh, deassociation, and uh, reassociation. Association services, that is uh, the primary purpose of uh, MAC layer is to transfer MSBUs between uh, MAC entities, which is fulfilled by the distribution service. But the distribution system service cannot uh, do its job unless it knows of information about the station within the uh, extended uh, service system. So this is provided by association related services and the station must be associated with the with the basic service set so before discussing association we first need to understand a little about the mobility the three transition types are defined uh, that is no transition uh, bss transition and ess transition uh, no transition uh, sta is a, uh, either stationary or only moves within the confines of a single basic set service BSS transition means uh, STA moves uh, 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 from one BSS to another BSS within a extended service set. So there's, there needs to be some mechanisms regarding the location of the STA, that is advertisement, right? Uh, which, uh, this is uh, provided by the association related services. So extended uh, service sets transition, that is uh, the movement of STA from a basic service set to another basic service set in another uh, extended service set uh, is, uh, this case is only supported in the sense that a station can move. And also 8011 cannot uh, guarantee the delivery of data. Normally the disruption of the service is like to uh, occur. So the distribution service cannot uh, function unless it knows which uh, access point each uh, uh, advertisement is associated with. So therefore the advertisement must uh, associate with the uh, access point and maintain the association. And in case where the advertisement moves from one uh, basic service set to another uh, BS uh, within uh, uh, extended service uh, reassociated with the new uh, basic service set. 
In this association, when an advertisement leaves a extended service sets or shut down, the Mac does not provide management facility that protects itself against the station that suddenly disappears. So these are the association and the reassociation and disassociation. These are the association services. So association establishes initial association between a station and a access point. So before a station is allowed to transmit to receive frames, its identity and the address must be known. And the access point communicates this information with the other access points within the extended service system to facilitate routing and delivery within the uh, distributed system. Uh, in reassociation, it's enable an established association to be transferred from one access point to another, allowing a, a mobile advertisement to move from one BSS to another BSS. So this association is a, a notification from either advertisement or a, a, a access point that an existing association is terminated. So far, uh, uh, these are the things that we have discussed and uh, so the next we have to discuss about the uh, i3 for the 11 medium access control so so from from these slides uh, some of them uh, might be uh, make use uh, to uh, create uh, small questions so therefore uh, that's why it is uh, better to go through with them uh, so let's see uh, the next one. Uh, that is about uh, So these are the uh, some of the uh, possible questions uh, that might ask for uh, online quiz. Uh, you can see that uh, what are the three transition types for a, a STA connecting to a wireless uh, LAN. Uh, one is no transition, other one is BSS transition and DSS transition. So, so this kind of a, a, a very brief answer might be, uh, might have to given uh, for this type of a question, right? Uh, so the, the normally the STA will connect to a access point which is in turn normally connects to a wired infrastructure so what is the terminology for a wireless configuration that does not make use of uh, wireless access point and each station communicates directly with the station within the communication range so that is called manet right so this kind of uh, things can be uh, asked in a question uh, so so when uh, after the uh, previous uh, presentation, we look at uh, what is uh, IEEE 80.11 MAC layer. So IEEE 80.MAC layer covers uh, three functional areas. One is uh, reliable data delivery, uh, access control, and uh, security. So we have discussed uh, access control in uh, switching and routing also. So reliable uh, data delivery, we look at what is what do you mean by reliable data delivery. The, all the wireless uh, local area networks are uh, subject to uh, considerable unreliability resulting in a loss of a significant number of frames because, because of uh, because uh, or due to different uh, barriers. Uh, one is uh, the noise, one is uh, interference. Uh, one is uh, propagation effect. So this is one of the area that uh, question can be arise uh, for an online quiz. And uh, we could uh, deal with errors at higher layers such as uh, TCP, but the timers are used for uh, retransmission at the higher layers, typically in the order of seconds. So much more efficient to deal with errors at the uh, MAC layer. Uh, so this is uh, MPDUs station delivery MAC protocol, uh, uh, data units, MAC protocol data units, MD, uh, MPDUs. Uh, you can see that uh, network layer three, network layer two, and 
Mac protocol data units, how it is utilized, which consists of one or more MSDUs. So the MSDUs introduced as a part of 802.11n in 2009. The fragmentation of the MSDU occurs and these fragments can be encapsulated in different MPDUs. Uh, so then uh, the MSDUs are passed down from layer 3 to uh, layer 7. So frame exchange protocol, the basic tra data transfer mechanism in uh, IEEE 802 in nodes and uh, exchange of two frames. One is uh, station sensor frame uh, distinct for another station. And the second is uh, one frame received by the other station, the, the other stations in an acknowledgement. So if an acknowledgement is not received within a short time period, the frame is recent. So the frame was uh, damaged or the acknowledgement was damaged. So either of uh, reason uh, might be to not receive an acknowledgement. To further enhance the reliability, a four frame uh, exchange may be used. Uh, that is what it, it has been uh, depicted in the picture. So four frame exchange, that four frame exchange operation that is uh, source STS send a uh, request to send a RTS frame. So then uh, destination STA respond which with the clear to send the CTAs. So once uh, the once the source receives CTAs, it will uh, transmit the data frame and the destination responds with the acknowledgement. So the RTS alerts all other STAs in a range that, uh, that an exchange is uh, underway. So the these STAs refrain from transmission in order to avoid the collide. So that CTS uh, does the same job as the RTS in uh, regards to informing other STS that an exchange is underway. So because of this, uh, the collision can be collision collision can be avoided. And the RTS and TS is a, a required function of the MAC protocol, but may be disabled. So. The medium access control actually we were focus in this light uh, sets. So distributed and centralized MAC algorithm were considered by uh, IEEE 802.11 working group. So in distributed uh, and if you centralize, if you look at, uh, when you look at first uh, distributed, the each STA makes their own decision when to transmit using a carrier sense mechanism like Ethernet. Now in Ethernet, we use uh, two mechanisms that is carrier sense multiple access collision detection method and carrier sense multiple access collision avoid method. And useful for burst is the traffic that is inconsistent traffic levels and useful for magnets. Right? Uh, uh, earlier we discussed about magnets. So centralized, that is uh, regulation of uh, transmission by a centralized decision maker. So useful for configuration in which the number of STS are interconnected with each other and uh, some sort of base station that attached to the backbone wired local area networks. Especially uh, useful for the time sensitive data and uh, setting the priorities for them. So if you look at the centralized or distributed uh, further, the, what was the decision of uh, IEEE 8011 working group is uh, the uh, centralized or so distributor. So the well, they decided to do both. And uh, as a result, uh, the MAC algorithm was created called uh, uh, DFW MAC, that is Distributed Foundation Wireless MAC. Distributed Foundation Wireless MAC. Now, hereafter, we call a DFW MAC. So distributed one. Uh, overall, but there is a provision for an op optional uh, centralized controller built on top. So this is uh, the 80, IEEE 802.11 protocol architecture. At the lowest level, we have the single layer. 
and the MAC layer is split into two sublayers that is distributed coordination function and point coordination function and uh, the CS DCF uses a contention algorithm that is all STS content for the medium and ordinary, ordinary the traffic uses DCF. So the PCF is a, a centralized MAC algorithm used to provide a, a contention free service that the PCF is a build on top of the DCF and exploits feature of DCF is to assure access for its users. So distribution uh, coordination function DCF uh, to transmit the frame that is listen to the medium that means sense the carrier uh, and if the medium idle then only transmit otherwise wait until it becomes idle and then transmit so that's how it is avoid the collision the collision detection is not used the dynamic range of signals on the medium is very large so the uh, transmitting station cannot effectively distinguish incoming weak signals from noise and the effect of its own transmission. So this is why we use the acknowledgements. So DCF and uh, IFS, that means uh, we want to avoid the situation that is caused by the uh, one persistent algorithm. So then uh, what we do is the, the listen to the medium and transmit as soon as the medium becomes idle. But to a more station to transmit while the medium is busy, then collision collision guaranteed. The CSM and CD system include including the Ethernet. So we use a set of delays called uh, interframe space. Uh, that is a uh, short uh, and uh, point coordination function and as well as distributed coordination function. So CSMA access. Uh, this is uh, the logic that they use for C CSMA. Uh, so I'm not going to elaborate. Uh, now it is waiting for the frame in transmit. So uh, then the medium idle. Uh, so if it is yes, then wait uh, IFS. If no, then wait until the current uh, transmission uh, ends. So likewise, uh, is logically it is happening. Uh, so once the medium uh, becomes idle, the steer delays so another EFS. If the medium remains idle during this time, then the station back off a random amount of time. The back off is a countdown timer. Uh, it will pause if the medium becomes busy and resume when I idle. So that's why it is uh, using this back off uh, algorithm. The steer then uh, sends the medium again and if the idly, idle it will transmit then the, the providing timer will be expired. So maintaining the stability, so to ensure the back-off maintains stability, binary exponential back-off is used. That means to similar to the back-off algorithm used in the CSMSED and provide means of handling heavy loads and repeat the fail attempts will result in longer and a longer back-off for time times. An image might better explain. So this is the, the back of time, right? So which stay, uh, STA will uh, transmit next? So this is how it is determined. And uh, the timer will adjust and the, and the waiting time will be increased or decreased. So accordingly, the idle will be identified and then uh, transmit the data to the destination. So back of timers, uh, the you, must, uh, you might be asking, how are these back of timers calculated? Uh, the randomly seems a, a bit uh, uh, big that one second, 30 minutes or three days, likewise. So contention windows are defined in the each Y specification. So it starts at seven, each failed attempt increases until the max. So network allocation vectors, that means uh, earlier in the lecture, we said that the administration wishes to transmit they send an RTS uh, request to send. So they uh, don't actually send their data immediately following a DIF. So this is respond to using a CTS and STA sends the data. So this is pretty cool uh, because uh, it allow a duration field in the frame to be set, which is how long the medium is busy. So this is used by another uh, by the other STS, which allow them to update uh, in Navy, that is network location vectors. 
the SDAs are not allowed to transmit until the NEA, NAV expires. So, are, are, are we there yet? Are we there yet? So, likewise, uh, it is uh, trying to uh, 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 network allocation vectors uh, use. Uh, so, that is uh, how it is happening. So, so there are we have seen that there are three IFS uh, that is short point coordinated and distributed coordinated. So sometimes uh, so the question might ask that uh, from this area uh, the three types of uh, three values of uh, three uh, types of uh, IFS might be asked. Uh, the values of uh, the IFS that is uh, STA one has uh, DIF as access and it sends the medium. The medium is idle and it waits to the I DIF period and sends again. That the medium is idle, so then it transmit it frames. So this is how the mechanism taking place. So value of uh, the IFS uh, different in different occasions. So accordingly, it will uh, happen. So this is one of the questions that might come to the online quiz sometimes. So, so then uh, we have to see that do we need the priorities if it fair? So it might not sound very fair that uh, some STS have higher priority than others. So it is actually a particular type of frame that has higher priority, not the STA. And all the STS are treated equally with DCF. So the acknowledgement uh, when a STA receive a frame for which is which it is addressed, so it replies with an acknowledgement. So that is Mac level acknowledgement, and it uses uh, SIFS gaps. So nobody else can transmit because they are wait in the longer DIFS period. So SIFS also provide efficient delivery of LLC review, which need to be split into multiple frames. So one LLC PDU split into multiple uh, Mac frames. So we have said that the originally ordinary traffic uses DCF. So initially the longest uh, IFS uh, that is DIFS is used as a minimum delay in order to contend for access. So this is true for all STAs. And once the contention period is over, so then uh, uh, use the SIFS. So, so in STA one wants to transmit an LLC PDU. This has been split into multiple frames. The medium is idle, so the STA waits uh, DIFS. The DI, uh, DIF period finishes, then the medium is checked again. The medium is still idle, so then STA one transmits its first frame. The recipient receives the frame and sends an acknowledgement after waiting. SIFS. So STA1 receives the acknowledgement and send the next frame after waiting uh, SIFS that is uh, allowed because the STA has already content for the access. So because all of uh, all other STAs are waiting, uh, DIF it allow STA1 to complete its transmission. The point coordination function, the PCF, that is uh, so we have discussed SIFS and DIFS. To complete the story, we need to discuss PIFS. You may observe that the PIFS is a time period between SIFS and DIFS. So the PIFS is used by a centralized control and takes a precedence of over normal contention uh, traffic. So point coordination function, that is PCF, is an alternative access method implemented on top of uh, DCF. A centralized poly master of the point coordinate is required. This point coordinator makes use of PIFS to show poles. So because PIFS uh, is of smaller duration than DIFS, then it can lock out all the traffic. So extreme example of PISF, that is a wireless network has been configured with two types of nodes, and nodes that transmit time sensitive traffic and nodes that transmit normal traffic. So the central station poles each DST STA using PIFS. Uh, each DST STA acts the 
all the using SIFS or begins the transmission of the data using SIFS. So therefore, uh, you, you see a problem with this, that is uh, STS waiting to transmit normal data will never get the opportunity that DIFS is of a longer duration than DIFS. So it's repeated polling locks out all the other STS. So super frame, that is to allow both uh, DCF and PCF to coexist an interval called uh, uh, a super frame, uh, super frame is defined. So during this uh, first part of the interval, allow the PCF uh, polling. And for the remainder, the PCF stop polling and allow the DCF trans traffic to extend for the median. So if you look at the, the MAC frame, that is the MAC frame is known as a MPDU, MAC protocol data unit. So depending on the context, not all, all fields are used, shown here in gray, and uh, all other fields are mandatory. So the frame control, that is, uh, there are three types of frame, control, management, and data. So this is one of the questions that I can ask, uh, three types of uh, frames. Not only it is used to distinguish the type of frame, but it uh, may also contain control information, that is frame from DS, frame from to frame to DS, and fragmentation information and privacy information. So the MAC frame, uh, uh, the duration and connection ID, if used as a duration field, it, it indicates the time in microsecond and the channel will be allocated for successful transmission of the MAC frame. Uh, in some control frames, this uh, field may be used to store an association or connection identifiers. So address most of the time uh, 48 bit to be used this MAC frame. The, the first address is always the next recipient address and it's allow the quick scanning to determine if the correct destination. The other address fields are depend on the context of the frame. It is determined by the frame control field. So these are the, some of the MAC frame. The MAC frame control consists of 11 softwares, two of which are the to DS and from DS. The, these two fields are one bit each and uh, determine the relevance of the address phase. You can see that uh, the T, pro T, T, S and the from T, D, S. And now it is uh, determine the relevance of the address field. So uh, the, one of the question uh, might be that is why do we need so many addresses in Mac frame? So it is uh, uh, if you recall uh, our ESS, that is uh, STA2 wants to communicate with STA4. And how do we get to STA4? So we send the packet via so wireless access point. Then we need to know that the MAC address of the AP access point, that is BSS ID. So these are the... So, so why so why so many addresses? So this is a special case. So the sequence control that is a, a four bit fragment uh, number, fragment number, and twelve bit sequence number, and used for fragmentation and reassembly. So sequence of control, the reconstruct the frame to re retrieve the data. It's a sequence number. So, quality of service control contains the information uh, relating to the IEEE 802.11 quality of service facility. So, discussion is beyond the scope of this course, so therefore we restricted to this information only. The high throughput control contains the control bits related to the operations of uh, 802.11 in and 802.11 AC and 802.11 AD. So please. Uh, okay. Excuse me for one minute, right? I will come back again.
triple eight zero two dot eleven quality of service facility. Uh, so it was uh, restricted to this information. And uh, high throughput control contains uh, mm -hmm. control bits related to the operation of 802.11 and 802.11 AC and 802.11 AD. So better to uh, refer more information on this uh, from internet and make uh, make sound about this. Uh, uh, what is 802.11 N and what is 802.11 AC and 802.11 AD and what are the differences in between those? So better to refer that and keep in mind right so it will be benefited for you to the online quiz uh, so uh, the the frame bodies that is uh, contains the msdu or a fragment uh, of a msdu uh, the msdu is a llc pdo mac controlled information the frame check sequence is uh, a 32 bit redundancy check so these are the three types of MAC frames, uh, control, data, and management. So we said that uh, there are three types of MAC frames. So this is one of the questions that might ask. We have seen that question. Uh, here that uh, the control is uh, used to assist in reliable delivery of data frames, and there are six control frames in total. Data is, uh, there are eight data frames, and four of which carry user data. One of the remaining four relate to power management and the remaining three related to acknowledgement and polls. The management uh, frame is used to sorry, manage the communication between the uh, stations and uh, the applications. For example, the management of association, the request mm -hmm. response, reassociation, uh, disassociation and authentication. So, uh, if you look at what is control frames do, that is the power save fall. The STA will form uh, from time to time when not transmitting or receiving, activate a power saving mode. When the STA is asleep, it might miss frames. A PS poll is sent from the STA to access point to request that it resend the frame that is buffered. Uh, so RTSU, we know that the request to send, that is the first frame in the four-way frame uh, exchange. The frame is intended to alert other STS in the transmission range, that is that the sender of the RTS intended to send data to a destination. So CTS means to clear to send, that is the second frame in the four-way exchange, sent by a destination STA to the source STA to indicate it is ready to receive the data. So the acknowledgement uh, is sent by a destination STA to the source STA to let the source STA know it how has received the frame successfully and use for data management and uh, the PS4 frames. Contention free end that is CF used by the PCF to inform the STAs that the contention free period has ended. And the CF end and uh, CF act to acknowledge the CF end, and this frame ends the contention free period and releases the STS from the restriction associated with that period. So these are the, some of the data frames uh, you can see. Uh, I'm not going to elaborate it. Uh, null functions data frames uh, and uh, the management frames that is. Uh, uh, used to manage the communication between STS and access points, request, response, reassociation, disassociation, and authentication. So, so these are the things that we what we have covered. Uh, so, better to uh, refer those areas. So, most probably the online quiz uh, might be cover these uh, sections, and some question might be asked as I highlighted in some slides. So therefore, uh, we have to uh, be careful uh, about the when we when we about to do the online quiz uh, uh, in the future, right? So uh, then uh, next uh, before we discuss the next uh, slides. Uh, we will have a break uh, 
until 320 because the down with is 35 uh, 320 will have a, a 15 minutes break and uh, then come back again uh, to continue the the other uh, presentation thank you very much a little late right uh, anyway uh, uh, let's see uh, <clears throat> the next uh, uh, presentation uh, that we have to discuss and that is uh, actually uh, this one. Uh, let's see uh, how it is uh, and uh, what are the things uh, that we have to see. Okay. Uh, uh, this is some of the uh, possible questions uh, that might come uh, from the previous uh, uh, previous uh, presentation. The Mac Mac in the wireless network uses a set of delays called uh, interframe space. So what are the three types of delay? Uh, one is uh, SIF, PIF, and uh, DIF. So these are the answers for the question. You can go through the uh, previous uh, presentation, the presentation nine, and you can find out whether it is correct or not. <clears throat> so, why are the uh, three multiple address fields in MacAdder? Uh, that is, uh, the frame might need to traverse a distributed system to another uh, BS. Right? So, <clears throat> so after this presentation, uh, you should be able to uh, present an overview of alternative Y802.11 physical layer specification. So, this is the, one of the uh, required uh, reading. Uh, data and Computer Communication by William Starlings, uh, 10th edition. Uh, this is a Pearson uh, book. Uh, so it's a good book uh, to refer, right? So before the online quiz, uh, better to uh, uh, refer it. Uh, these lectures notes are based on the chapter 13. That could be chapter 17 of earlier edition. So the wireless network interface card, that is uh, in order to uh, interface with the wireless medium, uh, wireless local area network uh, interface card is required. So <clears throat> the WINC uh, is required, right? So a WINC performs the same function as the wired NIC. We know that uh, when we discussing about basic uh, things about the networking, uh, we found that uh, one of the basic requirement is network interface card. So in the slides, you can see one of the uh, uh, network wireless adapter. Uh, it's a USB, USB adapter, uh, which we can plug into a, 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 a device uh, like PC or a laptop. And we can enable the uh, interface for a wireless uh, access. So in uh, WINC perform the same function as wired NIC with the one major exception. What is the one major exception? There is no port to plug in the cable. There is no port to plug in the cable. Rather, an antenna is required to send and receive the uh, radio frequency signals. So you know that uh, the wireless are working with the uh, with the aid of uh, radio frequency. So especially the WNCs, uh, WNICs uh, modulate the data onto radio frequency carrier waves and determine when to send the packet and uh, transmit the packet. So one of the uh, question that is uh, possible uh, is there that is uh, in IEEE 802.11 technologies what is used to determine when to send the packet so the MAC algorithm right uh, so if you look at that phase uh, shift key uh, a carry wave that created by oscillator uh, it has a, a, a periodic and normally a sine wave, but cos can be used too. The carrier wave is said to carry the information. 
the carrier wave does not carry anything but energy as a wave form but we can manipulate the carrier wave by changing its uh, phase so if we had two phases we could uh, represent the binary one and binary zero <coughs> so uh, you can see that uh, so in digital also the the it has a discrete uh, waveform but here is a, a analog waveform uh, so then uh, uh, that uh, the difference we can uh, de represent by a uh, binary one and zero so if we had further phases we could represent two binary bits per phase zero zero one 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 zero zero one likewise so phase modulation now the binary signal one is represented by no phase shift that is zero decrease and binary zero is represented by a shift of 180 uh, degrees uh, in the waveform so you can see that uh, this is a digital digital waveform and this is the carrier wave and this is the dsbpsk modulated signal right so so these are the some of the uh, sorry i triple e standard the first version of the IEEE 802.11 standard includes the MAC layer, three separate uh, physical layers that is two that operate in 2.4 gigahertz band and one that operates in the infrared band and all operatings at uh, one to two megabits per second, no license licensing required, uh, used uh, direct sequences speed spectrum modulation. The number of channels was depend on available bandwidth and national regularity agencies. And this version is now obsolete and the original version just called IEEE 802.11 was replaced by IEEE 802.11a and IEEE 2.11b. Now, hereafter, uh, we are not talking about the previous one because they have been replaced with the IEEE 802.11 A and IEEE 802.11 B. So this is one of the questions uh, that might ask. Uh, when was the original IEEE 802.11 standard released? Uh, so it is 21 years ago, not too long. So that is, uh, if you can uh, remember, uh, right? Uh, so this is uh, uh, one uh, that uh, the, the release uh, date you can find out. So the early uh, AM uh, radio frequency transmission, that is uh, the earliest experimental AM transmission uh, were begin in early 1990s, uh, widespread uh, AM broadcasting was not uh, established until the 1920s. Uh, now you know that AM and FM, right? Uh, AM brand, band and FM band. Uh, AM band was, um, AM uh, broadcasting was not established until 1920s, following the development of uh, vacuum tube uh, receivers and transmitters. So the AM radio remained the dominant uh, method of broadcasting for the next 30 years a period called the golden age of radio. The television broadcasting became widespread in 1950s and received most of the programming carried by radio. <coughs> so, so introduction to the spread spectrum, the so narrow brand, uh, narrow band radio signals, that is a narrow band uh, of frequency that is classic FM transmission transmits on frequency between 100 megahertz to 102 megahertz the signal is constant and requires a lot of power the signal is easy to inter intercept that means just tune your radio to that frequency and the signals is easy to jam just to transmit on the same frequency so it's 
fed uh, spectrum radio signals that is broad bandwidth low power consumption even though a greater bandwidth is used and more secure so that's how it is uh, narrow band uh, radio signals and sped spectrum radio signals so direct sequence spread uh, spectrum uh, dsss was first used by the military in 1940s to hide the radio transmissions and it takes a narrow band uh, signal and spread it over the spectrum which result in a wide band signal the white band signal looks like noise that greater resistance to the intentional jamming and unintentional interference. So how to uh, spread the spectrum uh, that is a locally generated uh, PN bit stream is created that is on I triple eight zero two eleven uses the Baker sequence. The each bit is uh, XOR uh, D to a PN bit stream. The PN code consists of pulses of a much shorter duration, larger bandwidth than that of original signals. So the data input uh, like this, and uh, now it is uh, you can see the 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 narrow uh, with transmitted uh, narrow width, right? Chipping rate that uh, chip is essentially a pulse that is positive or negative. The chipping rate is the number of pulses per second. The chipping rate is larger than the symbol rate. One symbol is represented by multiple chips. The radio between symbol rate and the chipping rate is known as the uh, spreading factor. So this is a Baker sequence. One plus one percent uh, one and minus percent uh, zero. So that the transmitter receive uh, one bit, the one bit is spread using the Baker sequence by XORing, right? So XOR means uh, the OR is uh, zero plus one is OR, and uh, it is one, right? One one is zero, zero, zero one one, right? One one is zero, zero one one, zero one one, zero one one, like right? right? So, so the Baker sequence. Uh, uh, so the transmitter receives signals and Baker sequence is uh, the receive signals. The earlier one was uh, transmitted signal. This one is uh, received signal. So the, why the Baker? So okay, we have seen that we can spread the spectrum using a Baker sequence, but why use Baker? Why not use a locally generated PN bit stream? The answer lies in the there are low auto -co correlations properties. If the single uh, signal has been received correctly, we will always end up with zeros and ones perfect uh, correlation in zero and ones summations so question what was transmitted so the you can see one plus one represent one and the minus represent zero so the transmitter received a signal so the signal is spread using a baker sequence by XORing. so you can see zero one 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 zero one zero one 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 zero one one zero one zero 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 one 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 and one one is uh, equal to zero. So this is I triple eight zero two dot eleven B. The slow maximum bandwidth of uh, two megabits per second for the original I triple eight zero two dot eleven standard is not sufficient for most network applications. Thus, shortly after it was released in, uh, in uh, released I triple revisited the standard. An extension of IEEE uh, 802.11 is IEEE 802.11b. So introduced in 1999 and offered uh, additional higher da data rate that is from 5, 5 uh, megabit per second to 11 megabit per second. So please uh, uh, keep in mind these slides because uh, some of the question might come from the uh, these slides uh, about this uh, 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 data transfer speeds. 
and band about the bandwidth. So the operates in uh, 2.4 gigahertz frequency band. So the when, uh, when the question asks from IEEE 802.11b, so you should be able to remember this. And bandwidth from 2.4 uh, 0, 01 gigahertz to 2.495 gigahertz split into 22 megahertz channels. So 11 complementary code keying CCK modulation order. So complementary code keying, this is beyond the scope of this course, but it warrants an overview. Uh, input data are treated as 8 bit blocks. So six of blocks are mapped into one of 64 code sequence from a 64 into 64 matrix known as the Wolf's matrix. The output of matching plus the additional two bits forms the input to a QP escape code quadrature phase shift scheme or modulator. Uh, it's in short is called QP escape. No, whatever the way that you repronounce uh, re it, it's not a matter. Uh, the packet binary uh, convolutional coding is called, that is CCK. Uh, but uh, there is an increased computation at the receiver. So incorporate into IEEE 802.11b in anticipation of the need for higher data rates. So the physical layer frame structure, that is IEEE 802.11b defined two physical layer frame lengths, but the only difference is the length of the permeable. The original one 144-bit uh, permeable used in original IEEE 802.11 specification to allow interoperability with the legacy systems. The shorter 72-bit uh, permeable used in IEEE 802.11b and improves the throughput efficiency. So dynamic rate selection, that is DRS in short, the range of uh, access point is maximum of uh, 1000 sorry 115 meters the data rates will be dropped as a result of the signal strength and the quality of the signal so it will impact with the interference distance and obstructions the access point will automatically select the highest possible data rate for transmission depend on the strength and the quality of the transmission it receives theoretically the access point can support over 100 devices but the wireless medium is shared for light tube, that means email, occasional web shopping, and occasional transferring of medium sized files, maximum up to 50. Video, voice, or picture, uh, max up to 20 to 25. So the physical PDU is uh, that is uh, physical layer conversion protocol, uh, 56 bit uh, synchronization field, and 16 bit start frame delimiter. Transmitted at uh, 101 megabit per second using differentially differential binary PSK with the breaker spreading uh, spreading code. So, uh, eight bit signal field, a specific data rate uh, that uh, MPDU will be transmitted. Uh, eight bit service uh, that is uh, specifies whether the transmit frequency can and uh, the symbol clock use the same log local oscillator. Also, whether CCK and PBCC encoding is used, transmitted that to uh, 2 megabits per second using differential quadratures uh, PSK with the uh, Baker spreading code. So this is about uh, header. And uh, this is about uh, the MAC protocol data unit. And this is uh, IEEE 8011A. Uh, IEEE 8021B achieved a certain level of success, but limited data rate result in limited uh, field. Thus, work continue on IEEE 8022.11A specification to meet the need for a truly high speed wireless local area network. So as a result, uh, the, the makes use of frequency band called the Universal Networking Information Infrastructure, UNNI. The band one uh, is uh, indoor use, that is uh, ranging from 5.15 to 5.25 gigahertz. And uh, network, Universal Networking Information Infrastructure two band, uh, the 5.25 to 5.35 indoor or outdoor use. 
and the third one is uh, for outdoor use. So sometimes uh, a question might come from uh, this slide. And uh, these are the uh, advantages of its 02.b. Uh, uh, utilize more available bandwidth to provide four non overlapping channels for a total of 12 across the allocated spectrum. Much higher data rates, same maximum data rates as 802.11g. Uses a different uh, relative uncluttered uh, the frequency spectrum at 5 gigahertz and uh, i typically 802.11a does not use spect spread the spectrum it uses a scheme called uh, orthogonal frequency division multiplexing or OFDM. the multiple carrier waves are created with uh, which operate at a different frequency called sub carriers so up to 48 sub uh, carriers can be assigned uh, uh, in this technology. The sending some bits on each channel is uh, sub carrier and all the carriers are dedicated to a single source and data is mo modulated onto the carriers using a conventional modulation scheme uh, called uh, BPSK, QPSK, 16A, QAM or 64QAM. So this is uh, about uh, the PLCP permeable already discussed and uh, synchronization and SFD. The single fields uh, that is rated the uh, rate specifies the data rate at which the data field should be transmitted. Uh, R is uh, reverse reserved for future use. So the length is uh, the number of octet in the MAC PDU. P is an even parity bit for the 17 bits in rate, in R and uh, the length. So the tail signifies the end of the signal field. So you can uh, refer to uh, this uh, particular uh, structure. This is actually a uh, very in detail about uh, wireless technology. Uh, but uh, though we are discussing this, uh, talk to this level, it, it will not ask. The data consists of uh, a service subfield of 16 bits and the first seven bits are zero to allow synchronization. The remaining nine bits, again, all zeros are reserved for future use. And uh, MPDU, uh, that is data passed down from the MAC layer and tail as before and signifies the end of MPDU, that is all six bits are zero. So the pad that is the frame has to conform to the size depend on the OFDM scheme. So this is about uh, IEEE 802.11G. It's an extension to the I802.11B. So it is allow additional data rate about 20 megabits per second up to 20, 54 megabits per second. So those are the actually uh, most important information that you have to keep in mind, uh, not the other technological things. Uh, what is what are the data rates and uh, what are what is the range that is of can be operate, and uh, what is the what are the security features that are available. So that's all uh, you have to keep in mind, not any other things. Uh, actually, it's allow uh, it uh, operates in uh, 2.4 gigahertz range. This ensure that operability with the legacy devices and offers a wide range of modulation schemes that is same schemes as uh, IEEE 802.11b for legacy devices and legacy devices means the devices that has been manufactured uh, which complied with the uh, IEEE 802.11b so it is uh, so the 11g also compatible to those devices because of this and additional schemes for the higher data rates and uh, fixed a huge security hole that is uh, web uh, is uh, uh, by implementing the uh, WPA. It's more details to follow. So better to look at uh, what is uh, the difference between WEP and WPA. Uh, so those are the some of the uh, information about uh, 11G. And uh, please uh, go through these uh, uh, areas for questions. So definitely uh, one or two questions might come from these areas 
so therefore better to refer before the online quiz and uh, those are the things and uh, please uh, uh, look at these technologies as well uh, which is uh, come in the future uh, actually now it is already came uh, better to look at what is i triple eight zero two dot eleven in and what is uh, gigabit uh, wi-fi and what is uh, 802.11 AC and 802.11 AD and also better to look at 802.11 security consideration uh, for the better one of the online quiz. So that is my uh, humble request uh, to look at these areas as well uh, when you are going through these presentations. So that is uh, what uh, I hope to do today. Uh, I think uh, 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 we can, uh, if you want uh, further clarification on uh, online quiz, we can later on again, we can uh, arrange another uh, uh, lecture, a single day lecture. Uh, otherwise, up to now, uh, you know that uh, what are the areas that you have to explore to get ready for the online quiz, uh, if it is conduct uh, just after the submission of uh, the assignment too. So I believe uh, the things that I have emphasized uh, very at the beginning of this session, you will follow up and come up with the uh, uh, appropriate answer and uh, do the online quiz also in a better way because it also encounter 50% out of the 100. Uh, so therefore, if you perform well in the online quiz, so then you can cover up the things that you have missed in the uh, assignment too. So likewise, you can balance the module and you can pass the module. Uh, so please think about that also. So uh, I think that's uh, enough uh, for the time being. Uh, and uh, thank you very much for being with me for a long time uh, with the lectures. And uh, I uh, wish all the success uh, in the assignment as well as the online quiz and uh, your cooperation uh, that has been given right throughout the uh, online session uh, uh, appreciated and uh, thank you very much and uh, one day you'll meet again and uh, uh, sometimes most probably in the graduation uh, or we will be able to meet uh, physically right so thank you very much for being with me a long time see you again Thank you very Thank much. You very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.